So song dash here. Yes, what should we think about when setting up the negotiation? Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, a. Mm -hmm. Common name. Mm -hmm. Common name. What's that called? Another word for aims. Another word for the aims of people in a negotiation. Begins with I. Interest. Think about the interests or analyze the interests. What else? Batna. <coughs> so if we know the interests, we can figure out our Batna and the other person's Batna. Absolutely. Our no deal options. We should find our no deal option. What else should we think about? Use the agents or not? Use the agents. Right, we can think about agents. Think about the parties, right? Mm -hmm. Who are the parties who should be in the negotiation? Okay. So if we think about those things, we can. It helps us to set up. Think about the ethics. We should have an ethical, ethical guideline, right, for ourselves before we start the negotiation. Think about the process. Are we going to use decide, announce, defend, full consensus, or a mixture of the two? Are we going to use the small groups or large groups? Uh, think about, are we going to use mediation? Is mediation useful? Okay. So, map the players, find the interests, think about the no deal options. Okay. If our batnas and stretch goals and so on. Do you have any question about setting up? <coughs> So oh, let's move on then to the at the table. So today we're going to just introduce about designing this part, right? We already did at the start we did the overview of the course. Then we studied about setting up. Now we're studying about designing the value creating deals at the table. Do you understand at the table? Yes. We arrived at the negotiation, we did all of the setting up, right? So, we'll just introduce it today and then we'll go into more detail. We'll do a negotiation in the second class. We'll go into more detail next week. So, we have, like I said, traditional way of negotiating is win-win. Right? Before win-win, people might have thought competitive negotiation is okay. But this way that we're studying is a little bit different than win-win. Okay, and they talk about this vocabulary, moving northeast to create value. So if I draw the compass, north, east, right, west, and south. But if we make a graph, and here I have my company, okay, and you have your company here, and then Usually this side is plus and this side is negative, right? So where do we want to go? We want to find a deal here, okay? Which is positive for you and positive for me. So we don't want to be just stuck here, right? That we're both happy with this. I'm happy with this and you're happy with this. It's in the middle. Okay, that's kind of... Win-win is going to be somewhere here, right? But Moving northeast is trying to get as far here as possible. Okay, create as much advantage for me and as much advantage for you. Not that we are just both satisfied with the deal. We might be both satisfied with the deal here in win-win, but this is better situation. Okay, so they use this image of moving northeast as far as we can to create value. So north is the direction I want to go. East is the direction you want to go. Moving northeast is an attractive option. Okay? So we are not just going just north. Okay? And we're not going just east. 
that you get what you want and I give up. If you go east, we could go east and I could be okay, right? We could go here, then you're very happy, you got what you wanted, right? And I'm okay, I didn't lose anything, it's like a normal deal for me. If we were to buy half in half, right? Then I would just get half, okay? So here would be half and half, right? So we're not talking about half and dividing half and half, fixed pi. With win-win, they want to get here, you know, get something better than the fixed pi. But moving northeast is is uh, trying to get as much as we can, better than we can do by ourselves. So sometimes negotiations go nowhere. Okay, if there's no Zopa, people might think there's no deal, right? So we talked about the example before, simple example, selling a car. So we have the seller and the buyer. So if we just go to the reservation price, buyer's reservation price is 500. Seller's reservation price is 550. There is no Zopa, okay? But can we make a deal here? Right? Yes. Sometimes people would say, no, we can't make a deal. But win win negotiator could say, we might be able to make a deal. Why? Because I'm driving to Busan next month. So, anyway, I can deliver the car and take the train back to Seoul. So you can have free delivery. Okay? If I get the delivery, I have to go somewhere else. Okay? You, somebody said about the navigator. I have two navigators, I don't need one, I can't really sell a navigator, so I'll just give you the navigator, okay? So we can try to find a way here, okay? Uh, sometimes negotiation gets to a solution that nobody loves, but everybody can live with. So we can end up here. We don't, it doesn't give an advantage for either person, but it's fair. Is that fair? Yes, it's in the middle of the two people, we can both live with that, okay? And sometimes negotiations lead to a solution that is like the perfect trade between two stamp collectors. Do you collect stamps? Yes. Hmm? In the, nowadays people can send emails, right? Yes. But when I was young I collected stamps just huh? for what kind of very young. Uh, I don't know, just everybody tries when they're a kid. It was from Ireland, some stamps. If you get a stamp from another country, it's great, right? So, I can swap with you, right? I have two of the same stamps, and you have two of the same stamps. You don't need it. I don't need it. So, I, you're missing just one stamp to make a collection. I have the stamp you need. So, I give you the stamp, and you give me the stamp. Perfect deal, right? So, this is a deal that makes everybody much better off. That's what we're looking for. Can we find that kind of deal? Do you collect anything? Um, money. Uh, foreign. <laughs> hmm? Coins? Uh, uh, no, the foreign, foreign country. Notes? Yes. Uh, how many do you have? Um, Two? I have US dollar, Japanese M, Indonesia. How many? Just tell me how many. You don't have to tell me everyone. Three? A little bit, a little bit, some bit, many bit. Many? You're not sure? Okay, so you can get more and more. Do you guys collect anything? No? Hmm? Magnets? Bridge magnets? Where do you put the magnets? You put them on the fridge. <laughs> what does your mother think? <laughs> Cute. <laughs> she throws them away. Then how can you collect them if your mother just throws them away? Hmm? They're gone. Finished. And she doesn't really throw them away. Okay. Anybody else collect anything? No? Okay, <coughs> so 
Here is an example of a grading value. So we have a radio station and an engineering firm. Do you understand engineering? Yes. So their engineering firm, uh, they have a lot. They have some some uh, good engineering service. And the radio station can offer advertising time. Okay. So these two guys are making a negotiation. The radio station needs engineering services. It needs to upgrade its system. Its system is old-fashioned, so it needs to update its system. And the engineering company, they need to do some advertising. Right? But they don't have enough money to pay for expensive advertising. And the radio station doesn't want to pay a lot of money for upgrading its system. So what can they do? The firm, engineer firm, to help the radio station. How? Um, what, for what? Give a new, new, new equipment. Yes, so they can help them, right? And then what is the radio station going to do for the engineering firm? They will advertise their company. Right, they can give them advertising. Okay, so without doing any negotiation about money, we can make an agreement here to move to the northeast, right? North and east. Okay, here is no deal. Right? I don't have the money to pay for the advertising, so I can't pay for the advertising. Okay? I don't have the money to pay for engineering, so I can't get on deal. I don't agree with your price, you don't agree with my price. I think it's too high, your price is too high, and you think my price is too high. Okay? So instead we can just swap the services. Okay? You give me your service and I give you my service. In that case we can make a deal, which is value for both people. Okay? Then the radio, the radio station also has some surface equipment, like old equipment. The engineering company can use the old equipment, right? They, they can find some use for it, but the radio station has no use. So this has no value for the radio station. Sur do you understand surplus? Yes. And then they need some help, more help to configure. <coughs> Once it's installed, they need to help to configure. Do you understand configure? Configure means set up or make things. If you buy a TV, you need to configure the TV. So put in the stations, link to the internet, that kind of thing. Okay? So we can have even more value here. We find out that you have some extra equipment. So the engineers say, you can be the equipment, I give you configuration help. Okay? So this is win-win because we are not that busy now. That's why we want advertising. We don't have much business. Okay? So we are not busy, and then we're not using this equipment. Okay? So we can give you our time and you can give us the equipment. So we can get even further to the northeast. So we did this negotiation without talking about money. Okay? We didn't mention money at all. Just we found some things that we can make joint value creating create the value together and move in this way. So there's two main principles we're going to introduce. The first principle is dovetailing differences. So what is dovetailing? Sure. Another vocabulary, northeast, that we use to, to describe. So carpenters do dovetailing. Let's see if we can find on the Google Images. <laughs> so dove, dovetailing uh, joints by hand, right? So this kind of thing here, right? So tailboard, this is called a tailboard, pin board. So making the things fit together. Okay, they're different. These two things are different. 
that's different than this, but they can fit together. Okay, so the carpenter makes the different shapes and makes them fit together. It's called dovetailing. Do you understand dovetailing? No? So dovetailing, putting the different things together. It's called, it looks, looks like the tail of a dove a little bit. That's why it's called dovetailing. So in win-win, we talk about just finding common ground. Right? In the win-win negotiation, we build trust. We get to know each other. Okay? We trust each other. We make a good communication. We don't use the negative words. We use the positive words. Okay? Uh, this is a point also of mediator, find the common ground. If we have overlap of interests, it's more useful. Okay? We can find some common interests. But this is a little bit rare. So the most frequently overlooked source of value in an agreement actually comes from the differences of interest among the parties. Okay, so this is a win-win, and this is this treaty negotiation, right? So-called treaty negotiation, that we are looking more at the difference in the people. So can you remember the story we said in the introduction about Israel and Egypt? Uh, yes. Can you tell me the story? It's my mountain to go. Egypt wants the uh, Israel wants peace and Egypt wants a boundary. So they want to make a DMZ in Sinai mm. Mountain. Mm. Uh, so they want to make DMZ. So who's worried about security? Israel. Israel is worried about security. And, Israel, and Egypt? Want boundary. They want? Boundary. Um, guideline. Uh, they are more worried about sovereignty. sovereignty. Sovereignty is like being proud of your country or owning the land, right? So what deal did they make? DMZ. They make a DMZ and uh, put the flag on the Egypt. Yes. So Egypt gets the flag. They get to put their flag there and say, we own the territory, it's our territory, yes. right? But Egypt or Israel gets a DMZ for security. Egypt is not using the land for anything. Right? They made the negotiation, they agreed the land will always be DMZ. Okay? So how did they make that agreement? By looking at the differences. Israel wants security, Egypt wants sovereignty. Okay? So they have different interests. So if we understand the different interests they have, then we can, it can help us to make a deal. Right? If we look at what's a common interest among them, then we could find mm, both of them are interested in security, both of them are interested in sovereignty. Okay, so we could try to make kind of a 50-50 deal, where half of the land goes to Israel, and half of the land goes to Egypt. Right? But by looking at the difference, we can make a better deal. We also explained about the pizza. So I have chicken pizza. Right? I'm very good at art. <laughs> I have chicken pizza, and you want two thirds of the pizza, and I want two thirds of the pizza. How can we make a fair deal? Interest value. Who wants the edge side or who wants the middle side? When we look at the differences, what do you want? I want. I want the chicken. I like the chicken. Right, what do you want? You want the crust. Okay? So now we can make a deal. You can get this part on the outside, and I get this part on the inside. So instead of cutting the pizza in half, we make a circle. Maybe it's not easy to cut like a circle. Right? But because we understood the difference, we can create more value for the two people. We can do the same story for an orange. Let's say you want two-thirds of the orange and I want two-thirds of the orange. Why, why do I want the orange? Why do you want the orange? So you want the orange because you're hungry. I want the orange because I want to make some sauce. And I need the peel. Do you understand the peel? So what can we do then? Half the orange? You get half and I get half? No. 
What? Cut the peel. So give me the peel of the orange, and you get the inside of the orange. Okay? So we have that's a very clear one, right? All I want is the peel, all you want is the inside of the orange. So we can easily divide. But if we just fight over the orange, we're just going to end up I get half the peel and you get half the orange. So you get half of what we want. So with dovetailing differences, we make the differences fit together, right? What's something that they want badly? And I don't th think it's valuable, okay? They want the peel. Do I think the peel is valuable? I'm hungry. No. No, right? They want the orange part, they're hungry, but I want the peel to make the sauce. Did you know you can use the peel of the orange to make a sauce? No. Oh no. You did? Do you watch the chef program on the TV? I know. Do you like Michael? Meet Michael from Bulgaria? Ah, yeah, I know. Meet Kev? What? If I see the program, Mikael always wins for me. <laughs> but the other guys always make Korean food. Spicy Korean food with some other taste. But Mikael always makes a Western type dish. So it's a very easy program for me. My wife never likes the dish by the guy. Just the Korean dish. Do you know the program I'm talking about? Yes, what's the name? Ling Jang Wu. How do you translate into English? Uh, saving, refrigerator. Please take my refrigerator. Please take my refrigerator and cook something nice out of my refrigerator. Who was your favorite guest? I don't interest about the guest, but I just mm -hmm. watched it for the last beer and the food. Okay. Are you good at cooking? Quite good. <laughs> what can you cook? Korean food? Maybe. Like what? Sweet chili. <laughs> no. Who they take a yes? My wife likes, but I don't. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife makes good egg at home. She just eats by herself. <laughs> I make some sandwich. Uh. <laughs> or something else. Right? Anything else? A lot of. So a good husband, right? <laughs> you listening? You can do the cooking. What about you guys? Can you do any cooking? Uh, hmm? uh, yes? What can you cook? Okay. What can you cook? Noodles? Eggs? Kimchi Kimchi bokeum bao? What about you guys? <laughs> Okay. So, 
we have to ask what are the high benefit and the low cost uh, possibilities. Okay, so what's a high benefit for me and a low cost for you? So we looked at the example of the station, unsold airtime, and surplus equipment aren't worth much. Do you understand the unsold airtime? So they were they had some advertising time they couldn't sell, right? And then they have equipment they didn't need. It's not worth much to them. Engineering expertise was very important. They really need ex engineering expertise, right? The engineers, they're not busy. They don't have enough business. So giving the technical support to the station is low value, okay? Anyway, we're doing nothing next week. Okay, uh, but we really need the advertising. And we need the surface equipment. We can use the equipment for another client. So if we do this, we can see that this is not valuable for you, this is not valuable for me, this is valuable, what you have is valuable for me, and we can make a better value. So dovetailing goes beyond the uh, simple differences of interests or priorities, okay? So it also is the difference in forecast about the future, difference in attitudes over risk and time and other things that we can profitably use to make an agreement. Okay? So we understand interest, but we can also have forecasts about the future. So we looked at the IT company that wants to sell itself to somebody. Okay? So the IT company thinks we are going to be very successful in the future, but the person who's buying the IT company doesn't agree. So how can they make an agreement which will be help to solve this difference of opinion? I think my IT company is going to be very successful in the future. You think it will be successful, but not that successful. So you don't want to pay that much money, but I want you to pay a lot of money. So how can we make an agreement by understanding the difference? Make a better No? Anything else? Invest separately. What do you mean invest separately? I invest. You, I want to sell my company and you want to buy my company. I want to sell my company and go and live in the Grand Canary Islands lie on the beach for the rest of my life. Right? We want to buy my company, make a profit. But we don't agree about the price because our forecast about the future is different. So what can we do? Can you remember, I think we mentioned before, well, we can make a contract based on the performance of the company in the future. It's, very, it's similar with players, soccer players. What's the problem? The soccer player can get injured. Right? Or they can perform very badly. I think the soccer player, I'm the soccer player, I think I'm going to score a lot of goals. Right? But if I don't score a lot of goals, then it's a problem. Right? You think I might not score a lot of goals. So what can we do? Make a contract where I get paid for every goal I score. Do you understand? Yes. So I, I'm happy because I think I'm going to score a lot of goals, so I'll get a big bonus. And you're happy, because if I don't score a lot of goals, then you don't have to pay me any money. This okay. is the incentive to go. Yes, but it's making, allowing us to make a negotiation, right? By understanding my difference, right? I think I should get paid a higher salary, because I'm going to score a lot of goals. You think I should get paid a lower salary? Because you think I'm going to score some goals, but not that many. So we can't make an agreement, we can't make a contract. So a creative way is, I pay me a basic salary, and then a bonus for all the goals I score. Okay? That's a common thing in sports. But also we can do in business. So the IT company gets paid. If the company makes a bigger profit, then you pay me uh, more money. Okay? That idea has also been suggested about the 
debt in the countries like Greece, if they grow a lot, their GDP grows a lot, then they can pay back more debt. But if their GDP doesn't grow a lot, they don't have to pay back. So that kind, they could make that kind of contract when they're doing selling the bond. Okay? So people have different attitudes towards risk and time. So I want to take a lot of risk. You don't want to take a lot of risk. Right? Again, we could try to make some insurance or another type of uh, thing for the contract. You understand insurance? Okay, so there are a lot of other differences that uh, we can have, that we can think about. So we're just introducing differences now. Uh, chapter 9, we'll study later, is about the differences in more detail. So then the second principle is maximizing the pie. Do you understand maximize the pie? Yeah. So we often talk, we talk about pie in negotiations. Do you like pie? Yes. What kind of pie do you like? Pino pie? Pecan pie? Pecan pie? So most, the problem is, we talk about in negotiation that people think it's a fixed pie. Fixed pie assumption. Pie is just this big. You get half and I get half. Okay? But we can make the pie bigger. Okay? Try to make the pie bigger. So maximize the pie. So we're not just negotiating about you get half and I get half. Okay? We're negotiating about making it bigger for everybody. So we have to think creatively, outside the box. Do you understand think outside the box? Have you ever heard that phrase in English? Are you good at thinking outside the box? Here is the box, right? A lot of people only think inside the box, uh -huh. right? Can you think outside the box out here? So usually there's rules. Here are the rules, okay? And you can think outside the box, outside here. So if you listen to Steve Jobs or you listen to some entrepreneur who started their own company, they often say that the key to success is that everybody just do things because that's the way it was always done. Do you understand? Yes. They know, these are the rules and that's the way it's always done. But the entrepreneurs say that they, they don't think like that. They don't think this is the way the world is. They think the world can be whatever I want it to be. Right? I can do whatever I want. So Steve Jobs would say that kind of thing. Okay? Why do people have to drive on roads? Or why do we have to have track lights. Why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do that? Because it's the way it was always done, right? So Steve Jobs used to be told that when he was young, right? No, you can't have this thing, tablet, that you carry around because people don't use that, right? So we have to think creatively, outside the rules, outside of the normal way. What can we do to create the most value together? What specific steps can, steps can we take to maximize the net value of the pie? What does net mean? Net usually means minus costs, right? Yes. So we get some advantages. Minus advantage for me, minus cost for you, might be higher. Okay? Advantage for you, minus cost for me. This is what we're talking about.